today we're going to show you how to make and play one of my favorite games that I got for Christmas way back when I was just a little tyke. It's called Penny Hockey. We're going to show you how to make this board, play the game. All right, let's go. All right, here's what we need. A game board about a half an inch thick, 16 inches long, and 12 inches wide. A one by two, about six feet long. A quarter inch dowel rod, about 48 inches long. A box of finishing nails. I use 4D, one and a half inch length smooth shaft. Some wood glue. I use Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. A carpenter's knife with a fresh blade. A tape measure. A quarter inch standard wood drill bit. A 13 16 wood boring spade drill bit. A drill. A circular saw. Some 220 grit sandpaper or sanding disc pad for a power sander. A hammer. And a pencil. And of course a penny. To get started we'll use our pencil to mark off the game board. That way we know where to drill the holes. Mark center lines vertically and horizontally leaving four quadrants of equal value. Trace around the penny for the goal holes. You will use the 13th 16th wood boring spade to make these holes. And 11 holes for the pegs. You'll use the quarter inch drill bit to make these holes. This is a picture of a finished board to give you a better visual representation. The goal hole should be centered vertically and be one penny space from the back of the board. The front peg should also be centered vertically and be one penny space from the goal. The right and left peg should be aligned with the front of the goal and should be about an inch off the center line on each side. I took some pictures with my tape measure to give you some guide on distances and measurements. However, there's no really right or wrong here. The biggest thing is making sure that the measurements are even on both sides and in the same places. If you wanted to make a less challenging board, you could use less pegs or space out the distance between them, or vice versa for a more challenging game. Alright, let's review. Vertical and horizontal center lines, holes on each end for the goals, and 11 holes for the pegs. Once everything is marked, it's time to drill! All holes can be drilled completely through the board, even the peg holes. Also, when you're drilling the peg holes, remember to keep your drill as vertical as possible. That way you won't have or end up with crooked pegs. After drilling, you can sand the top of the game board to make sure the playing surface has a smooth area for the penny to glide on. Remember, before you cut your 1x2s, one of your ends is going to have to be longer than the game board, enough to accept the extra space of the opposing 1x2. I made my vertical rails the same length as the game board, about 16 inches, and my horizontal rails about 14 inches, a couple inches bigger than the horizontal length of the game board. That way it covered the extra sides of the 1x2s. Unless you want to miter a 45, and then, well... I didn't feel like going through that trouble. And there we go. It's time to make the 11 pegs. Just a hair taller. Remember to make them just a smidge taller than the one by two. That way we have a little bit of room to sand. Take your knife, line it up, and then we'll just roll it back and forth real good. Okay. There's 
too. Now it's time to attach the side rails. Use a little bit of the wood glue, run a bead, and then you can tack it on with the finishing nails. the lip to be here. So we line everything up nice and straight. We want it to be nice and flat on the bottom. I think you have everything right there. You can put your first nail in. Alright, just buff in your corners to make nice smooth surface so the other board can lay there. And now we're putting on the ends. Okay. So we put some glue. What the? He's got nailed in his mouth. Any excess glue? Ow. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. There you go. We're just running around the sander to smooth out the lips and edges and any of the corners and stuff so we have a nice, smooth, rounded edges. Let's do it. Oh, almost bug for Troy Sage Light. Bottom of your peg, it's going to downwards. Good stuff to make it flat. 
top of the peg, we're going to go down like this, and then we're going to roll around so we get kind of a rounded edge. Watch your fingers. step is to put your pegs in so remember the sides that we rounded off are the ones that we want it to be up and the other ones are the ones that we want to go in down in all right so we're gonna put a dab of glue in all the holes We're going to press the pigs in. It's gonna be a little big. Okay. All right. And bam. Now we're gonna lay this over top of the pegs and get our hammer so we don't hurt the pegs. Hold that there. Look out. Same thing for the last step. We can put another little dab of glue on all the pegs underneath. After that dries, you can sand off the excess from the bottom of the pegs. All right, so now we're going to take our sander and we're going to sand down the pegs now that the glue's dry and make it all flat so the bottom of the board will sit even. All right, I'm gonna do this outside and the lighting's not good, so I'm not gonna videotape this. All right, so we're all done. And we got the pegs on the bottom nice and flat so the board can fit flat. And that's it, kids, penny hockey. If you followed these steps, congratulations. You just built yourself your first penny hockey board. You could stain, paint, or shellac your board, but I kind of just like it natural. All right, now Short Sleeve and I are going to show you how to play penny hockey. How many flicks do you get? Huh? How many flicks do you get? You each take turn. I get one. one you get one. Yeah. Ooh. Uh oh, I'm going to screw myself.
Score. Play game. And that's how you play Penny Hockey.